everyone, welcome to another sewing tutorial. In this video, we'll be learning about clipping and notching in seam allowances. Or, to put it in simpler terms, how to properly sew curves and corners in fabric. Let's begin! More often than not, it's the smallest details that make the biggest difference to the final look of your sewn piece. But knowing what technique to apply, and when, and more importantly why, can be frustrating for even the most seasoned of sewers. Many sewing patterns will often tell you to clip corners and curves. If sewing curves and corners wasn't tricky enough to begin with, then getting it to sit perfectly crisp once it's pressed can prove to be even more frustrating, unless you know when to clip and notch. The reason why we do this is so that when your curved or pointed seam is turned the right way out, it will sit nice and flat. If you leave your seam without clipping sewing curves and corners, they will wrinkle and pull and not look attractive. Let's begin with clipping. Clipping is done on a concave seam, one that looks like a valley or a smile. This type of seam is commonly found on a neckline or an armhole. Let's look at the difference between these two curves. The first one hasn't been clipped, but the second one has. If you don't clip your finished item, it can end up bunching or pulling strangely, which is definitely not what you want when you have put so much effort into your sewing. Once you've sewn your concave seam, have a go at turning it to the right side and getting it to lie flat. Try as you might, it just won't. The shorter curve that is the raw edge of your seam allowance will stop you from being able to spread the seam allowance out in order to press it flat. In the first sample, it wasn't possible to press the curve flat at all, since the fabric underneath was stretched and caused bunching at the seam. See how the curve in the second fabric sits flat and it looks smooth once it's ironed? This is, of course, thanks to the seam being clipped. This allows the tight fabric to open up and have more give, which in turn means it's much easier to press. To clip, you just need to put little snips along the curve almost up to the stitch line. Be very careful not to cut through the stitching. I prefer using small, sharp embroidery scissors or my snips to do this, since I find it faster and I have more control. The distance between the clipping varies. I usually do it about a centimetre or three-eighths of an inch but you can adjust this depending on whether your curve is gentle or steep. A gentle curve will need less clipping than a steeper curve. Be conservative when you clip, since you don't want to weaken the seam by having it pull apart after washing. You can always go back and add a few extra clips after pressing in the areas that need them. By simply snipping or clipping into the seam allowance, getting nice and close to your line of stitching, You'll release the tension and find that pressing your seam out to the right side is now super easy. Now let's look at notching. Notching is done on a convex seam, a curved one that looks like a hill or the top of a bowler hat. This type of seam is commonly found on bust shaping seams and sweetheart necklines. The first sample has no notching done to the seam allowance while the second one does have its seam allowance notched. Once again, if you try to turn your convex seam out to the right side before you've notched it, you'll find that the excess seam allowance bunches up. This is because the curve of the raw edge is longer than that of the seam, so there's more excess fabric. Notching helps us to get rid of this unwanted excess. To notch your convex seam, snip little triangles out of the seam allowance every centimetre or half inch or so. Get nice and close to your stitches, without snipping through them of course. Clipping sewing curves that are convex takes out some of the bulkiness of the fabric when you turn it the right way out. When the convex curve is the right way out, the notch sides will curl up and touch each other at the edges, eliminating the bulk. When you turn your curved piece the right way out, use a blunt object such as a point turner, a chopstick or even a butter knife to smooth out the curve before pressing. I always find that doing this means I can get right into the nooks of the seam allowance. Turn your seam out to the right side, give it a good press and enjoy that beautiful, unbunchy flatness of a lovely notched curve. Let's talk about clipping corners. There are two types of corners we'll go through in this tutorial. Outward corners are like those found at the edge of blankets, and inward corners like those found in square necklines. 
Let's discuss outward corners first. You can technically get away without clipping these corners, but honestly, there ends up being so much excess fabric from the seam allowance that once it's ironed flat, it just looks ugly and kind of bulky. Here are two examples of an outward corner with the edges clipped. The first sample is the one that we just ironed without clipping. You can see that the edge is bulky and has a lot of excess fabric inside. While the second sample is clipped and lies nice and flat, you can also see that the edge is a lot sharper as well. When you have an outward corner, you will need to clip the point at the diagonal on the seam allowance to reduce the bulk. Be very careful not to clip through your stitching line though. Once you have turned your piece the right side out, find something pointed to further push out the corners. I have my trusty old wooden chopstick, but sometimes for very sharp points, I use a sharpened pencil or even a knitting needle. Make sure not to push too hard when turning out your corners or you'll poke a hole right through your stitches. Then just press your new corner flat with your iron. Look at the difference that makes. Without all that extra fabric, that corner is nice and crisp. If the corner you are sewing is pointed very sharply, like a V, you might need to cut some of the excess fabric from the seam allowance as well. See how in this sample, first I cut the corner triangle at the top, and then I shaved down some of the top edges of the seam. That way, when it's pressed flat, you have less excess fabric at the top end. Now for the inward seam. Like the other examples before, this first sample doesn't have the seam allowance clipped, while the second sample does have the clipped seam allowance. Look at the difference! You can see that there is a huge amount of tension from the seam allowance that hasn't been clipped. So much so that I can barely turn the unclipped sample the right way out to show you. To clip an inward corner, you need to make a small cut almost up to the seam allowance right into the corner. This will open up the seam, relax the tension in the fabric and give it a nice shape when it's turned the right way around. Then it's just a matter of turning it the right way out, carefully pressing it flat and admiring your beautiful new corner. Here's a handy trick I was taught when sewing corners. When you get close to the point you'll need to clip, turn your stitch length down to make the stitches smaller. The smaller the stitch, the more stability you have, and the less space and gaping you have between stitches. This means that when you turn the fabric the right way out, you'll have more stability and less gaping on those areas. Which is handy if you're using an object to turn the corners and you're sometimes a little heavy handed like I am. And look at that, beautiful, turned, sharp, lovely corners. Okay, let's do some troubleshooting now. Troubleshooting tip number one. Why does my convex curve have weird flat edges? This means you didn't add enough notches to it and there's too much excess fabric still. To fix this, just turn it back the wrong way around and add some more notches to that area. Then smooth out the curve and press again. If you look closely, you can see the previous line of where it was pressed before I added some more notches. Troubleshooting tip number two. Why does my inward corner have so much bunching? That's because when you clip the seam allowance to release the tension, you didn't clip close enough to the stitching line. To fix this, you simply need to turn the fabric inside out again. Then just clip closer to the stitching corner. Be careful not to cut through the line, however. Once it's cut closer to the corner, it should now sit nice and flat. Troubleshooting tip number three. I have a hole in my fabric. This means that, unfortunately, you accidentally flew too close to the sun. Or in other words, you clipped too close to the stitching line and cut right through it. As you can see when we turn the fabric inside out, the stitching on either side unravels and when under tension, makes an even bigger hole. To fix this, you'll have to close the hole by turning the fabric the wrong way out and restitching over the point where you've cut. This is why you need to be careful with how you snip or notch fabric. 
because if you make too big a hole, you'll have to sew further back from the stitching line to close it. And the further back from the original stitching line you have to sew, the bigger the change to the original shape will become. Congratulations! You have now learned some new sewing techniques that will make your curved lines look so much crisper and flatter. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you're interested in seeing more tutorials, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Or you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram. Have an amazing day and happy crafting!